Greetings, this is Preacher Rick. One more time, preaching the Word of God. We're in the book of James, getting close to the end of the New Testament. We'll be long. Just a few more books of the Bible. We're preaching 10 minutes a day through the entire book of the Bible. We are now in the book of James. And I want to give you just a little bit of history before we turn to the Word of God. James, uh, there were four major James uh, that were mentioned in the New Testament. But the one that almost everyone that really studies deep on the book of James believes it is, is James, uh, also known as James the Just. You can read about him in Acts 15, 23 to 29. And he was the half-brother of Jesus. Uh, he was a, one of the children of Joseph and Mary after Jesus was born through the Virgin Mary before she, uh, her and Joseph had children. So anyway, that's who they believe uh, wrote the book of James, and so do I. Uh, anyway, let's turn straight to it and get into the Word of God and preach His unsearchable riches one more time. We are in the first chapter. And we're in verse 22. Uh, but be ye doers of the word and not hearers only deceiving your own self. So uh, you can hear the word of God and believe you have faith. Uh, but faith without works, we're going to be reading in a little bit, is dead being alone. Uh, so faith uh, creates works in our life. Uh, so if we're, we hear the word of God, it's not enough. And to believe the word of God is not enough. You have to receive the word of God in your heart. And be a doer of what God says to do. And the first thing you must do is repent of your sins, of course. And then after you repent, you say, and I've, I've shared before what that is. That's a total turnaround. It's a 180, if you want to call it that. Uh, you turn around. You really are sorry. You have a broken heart and a contrite spirit, a repenting spirit. You're sorry that you've sinned against your maker. And you, you pray to him about it and say, Lord, I'm sorry that I've, uh, I'm a sinner. Please have mercy on me and save me. And he does. Praise God. So that's the first step. Then after you're saved, thank God, we're not saved by works lest any man should boast. But by the grace of God, we know that. But works will follow, thank God, uh, just like they do in a family. Uh, everyone has their own duties. Uh, and that works uh, make faith what it is. So let's read it. For if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man beholding his natural face in a glass, for he beholdeth himself and goeth his way, and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty, who the sun sets free is free indeed, I'll throw that in, and continueth therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. Thank God forever. Now over in the next chapter, chapter 2, starting in verse 14, I want to read a little bit. What does it profit? And I put my own question mark there, and I know it's a question, but God asked, what does it profit, my brethren, though a man say he hath faith and have not works? Can faith save him? Well, that's an obvious answer. I love faith, and we're saved by grace through faith. We're not saved by faith. We're saved by grace through faith. Now, faith can't save you unless that faith takes you to the Word and you're a doer of the Word. And when you do the Word, you will repent of your sins and you will be born again and you will be a Christian. Thank God. And life will start new in your heart. And how wonderful it is. Verse 15 says, If a brother or sister be naked and destitute of food, and none of you say unto them, Depart in peace, be ye warm and filled. Notwithstanding you give them not those things which are needful to the body, what does it profit? If someone's hungry and you say, Well, be filled up, but you don't give me any food, a lot of good it did, right? No different. Even so, faith, if it hath not works, is dead, being alone. Yea, a man may say, Thou hast faith, and I have works. Boy, a lot of people believe that. They work their way to heaven. Show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show thee my faith by my works. Amen. How do you know I'm a Christian? By my works. Because I care about the things that be of God, and he tells me what to do. To go to church regular, to pray regular, uh, to love my enemy, and pray for them to spitefully use me, and to uh, 
uh, help people and to uh, love your neighbor as yourself. And it just goes on and on and on. Uh, living a sanctified, dedicated, consecrated, holy life, uh, one that uh, uh, eschews evil and presses toward the mark of the high calling and cares about the things that be of God more than the things that be of man, including their own. Now, he said in verse 19, Thou believest that there is one God, well, thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. Well, there's proof right there that believing's not good enough. The devil believes, but he's not saved. But wilt thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead? It sure is. Was not Abraham our father justified by works? James speaking to the other Hebrews, the other Jews, and such. So he, they knew exactly who he was talking about when he talked about Abraham their father. Was he not justified by works? when he had offered Isaac his son upon the altar. And that's another story. That's a wonderful sermon. Good song out about it. Seest thou how faith wrought with his works, and by works was faith made perfect? And the scripture was fulfilled which saith, Abraham believed God, and it was imputed unto him for righteousness, and he was called the friend of God. I want to be a friend of God, don't you? And you know what the Bible says about his friendship to us? The Bible says he's a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. And boy, that's close. Uh, at least a lot, most of the time with brothers. They'll defend one another to the grave. You see then how that by, a work, by works a man is justified and not by faith only? Likewise also was not Rahab the harlot justified by works? When she had received the messengers and had sent them out there another way. You have to read the Bible to understand what that's talking about. I'll try to take time to explain it if I have time. For as the body without the spirit is dead. Isn't that the truth? Various. Why? The body without the spirit is dead. That's you and me. That's the one talking to you. You're the one hearing me. That's your spirit. That's your soul. You. Uh, for as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. Uh, so we see that, and uh, this harlot, uh, she wasn't a Jew, but when uh, they were going to walk, uh, march around the walls of Jericho, and, and, and God had uh, sent uh, sent them in, and they spied it out where they were seen, and they were going to be taken by those people, and those people were scared of them, but Rahab, she warned them, and she hid them, and she, and she got saved and her family got saved because of it. It's so important to understand that her works saved her. Even though works don't save you, works through faith. We're saved by grace through faith. Not of works, lest any man should boast. But faith without works is dead. And it sounds contradictive, but it's not. It's just explained here in this scripture. Basically, uh, thank God, is through your works that you produce faith and you show faith to others and you show faith to God. Thank God forever. And we preached the, the old book of Hebrews yesterday, the 11th chapter, the chapter of faith. Uh, and today we're seeing how faith works. Uh, thank God. And if you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ uh, in the pardon and remission of sin, uh, uh, you need to not only believe, it's not good enough to believe in the Lord. Uh, it's not good enough uh, uh, to work. Uh, it, it's not good enough to have faith. Uh, but when you combine those three, uh, it's sort of like combining the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Uh, thank God forever. Uh, that, that's when you have God. Uh, uh, thank God. And that's when you have salvation. Uh, when you combine grace, faith, uh, and works. Uh, thank God God smiles upon it. Uh, and he becomes a friend uh, that sticketh closer than a brother. Uh, and there's nothing like having God for a friend. Uh, I can say that he's always there. Uh, he said, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. Uh, Lo, I am with you all the way, even to the end of the world. Uh, I say glory. Hallelujah. Uh, thank God forever. Uh, I stand on the promises of God. And I have Jesus uh, as the best friend uh, a man can have. Uh, thank God I found out uh, that at 2 a.m. in the morning, uh, he's there for me. Uh, at 2 p.m. in the afternoon, uh, he's there for me. Uh, he's there for me right now. Uh, he's there for me in the hospital. Uh, he's there for me under the surgeon's knife. Uh, he's there for me on good days or what we call bad days. Uh, but the truth is any day uh, above the ground's a good day that God has blessed us with. Uh, and I praise him and I honor him and I thank him. Uh, and I recommend the Lord Jesus 
Jesus Christ to you uh, that you'll be saved. Repent of your sins. Don't just hear the word of God that I'm preaching to you, but do it. Uh, don't just hear what I'm saying to you. It's not good enough to hear. you got to do it. <coughs> and then, thank God, you will show your faith by doing the works that God told you to do. Repent of your sins. I thank God and love the Lord God Almighty with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. I put Him first in your life. I thank God uh, and establish uh, your Christian roots in the Bible. Thank God. Uh, hide the Word of God in your heart uh, and know the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, uh, thank God above everything else. Uh, oh, He is a wonderful Savior. Uh, I love Him today. Why? Uh, because He first loved me. Uh, God is love. He loves you. Uh, he has saved and redeemed us from the devil's hell. Uh, it's not God's will for any of us to perish, but all to repent and be born again. Thank God forever. And I realized my time has expired one more day. And I know uh, that the Word of God will save you if you'll let it. Uh, it's the Word of God. You believe. You believe. And it's good that you believe, but it's not enough. The devil believes and trembles. Listen, you've got to receive. You have to know Him in the pardon and remission of sin. You have to be born again, washed in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. And you Christians, work while it is yet day. For, and work while you can. For the night is coming when no man shall work. Night is swiftly coming upon this old world. Oh, look out over the harvest. The harvest is ripe. Oh, but the side scripture says, but the labors are few. Oh, it's time to work for the Lord. Get, bring in the sheaves as the old timers used to sing. Get them saved. Get your family, loved ones, friends and neighbors, stranger along the way in while there's still time. We're praying for you. God bless you until tomorrow, my beloved. This is Preacher Rick. God bless. Bye-bye.